There's two episodes left of The Mandalorian, not counting this one, which we'll talk about in a moment. Hello out there, I'm the oldest nerd, and today we're talking about Guns for Hire. This is Season 3, Episode 6, and uh, some people might not care for it because it doesn't advance the story. And I have problems with shows that are only advancing the story. I think that it's probably a good thing that you're tying in with other Star Wars properties, that you provide Easter eggs of uh, characters that were only mentioned in the comic books or in another uh, uh, cartoon series, and uh, little behind-the-scenes cut scenes from the main films. Uh, it gets a little bit tiring to try to keep all that lined up. What I really liked about The Mandalorian when they first started it was here is a lone gunman, basically. For hire, he goes into a town, finds somebody that needs help, helps him out, and then moves on. And he has his sidekick who doesn't talk with him. And that worked. Now, uh, in this episode, uh, now his uh, sidekick appears to be Bo-Katan. And uh, while Grogu uh, kind of takes a background role, uh, still a couple of useful scenes there. The big thing about this, of course, is the guest star list. And uh, there is a, um, a wrestler whose name I don't remember, who is uh, a crew of the ship we see in the very beginning. And then uh, uh, Jack Black, who uh, is um, a multi-talented individual who lights up a room whenever uh, he is in anything. And uh, he is paired with Lizzo, who also is uh, quite a, a good performer. And then uh, Christopher Lloyd in a pivotal role in here, uh, which uh, plays to his strengths. So uh, I kind of liked the fact that they're making some new friends, uh, that they have come to a place to where we see just about every alien lined up at a dinner table, and then uh, a droid bar, which uh, I loved the way they used this. The old Western trope, when the guy walks into the bar, the music stops and everybody stares at him, was done exactly like this when Bo-Katan and uh, the Mandalorian step into this droid bar. And here you have an example of virtually every kind of droid they've ever built. The protocol droids and mech droids and battery droids and bar droids. And uh, it doesn't really matter what the story is about at this point. Uh, they are helping out the rulers of this planet, uh, Plazar 15, and uh, it is uh, Jack Black and Lizzo who are the elected and um, bloodline leaders of this planet. It's uh, of total democracy. Uh, they don't have uh, any kind of policing, although they do have a settlement of Mandalorians who work as uh, protectors for their planet, but they don't police each other inside, don't allow weapons except for Mando and Bo-Katan when they come in because uh, it is their nature as Mandalorians to have weapons. And so they take advantage of that and they say, well, we need your help to uh, find out why some droids have gone uh, berserk and uh, can you handle it? And in exchange for that, we will allow you in the part of the planet where the Mandalorian's camp is. Now, this Mandalorian camp, of course, was Bo-Katan's followers who abandoned her when uh, Din Djarin won the battle of the, uh, the, the Dark Saber from Moff Gideon. And uh, since uh, she wasn't going to be the leader anymore, they just went off and set up their own uh, operation led by Axe Woves. And uh, by the time that Mando and Bo-Katan get there, uh, it's already been a pretty good episode. And uh, what we have uh, already, um, uh, Grogu has been knighted generally for uh, helping Lizzo cheat in some kind of um, cosmic croquet. And um, then it's a matter of uh, having to reunite this Mandalorian 
um, separatist group now uh, back to the army that uh, Bo-Katan is going to need in order to retake Mandalore and, uh, and unite the peoples, not only the, um, uh, the group that uh, Mando is a part of, but also everyone else. Now, this group sees Mando as kind of a zealot and therefore don't trust him. And with him having the dark saber, they certainly don't want to follow him. But in the way that the uh, group under the armorer worship this whole idea of keeping your helmet on and going uh, with the ancient ways, uh, Bo-Katan's former army uh, responds to the dark saber in almost the same way. Whoever possesses this, whoever uh, worthily possesses this, gets to be their leader. And uh, they think that uh, Mando himself isn't really worthy of that because he's a crazy uh, cultist, but uh, don't believe that uh, he can just hand it over to Bo-Katan. It has to be won in combat. Uh, the way that they come about getting Bo-Katan the saber is not through battle with Din Djarin, but rather uh, another creative way that actually works. So uh, I, I think that was a, a good ending to this. It, it shows that they are going to be able to start this campaign on restoring Mandalore. And they have now two episodes left in order to bring this to some kind of climax before the end of the uh, of this season. But it looks like it's something good coming up. And as I said at the beginning of this, I, I couldn't care less of whether this advances the story into the next movie or the next series or the next cartoon or what. But this, uh, this story arc that goes on here, I think would be a interesting way to see it continue to have uh, Mandalore restored if uh, they can do that within the confines of the elaborate canon of Star Wars. So I'd like to know what you think about this. Please put it in the comments below. And if you have not subscribed, please subscribe. It helps us. And uh, like the channel too. I don't really know what that does, but somebody said, you know, if you have a lot of likes, it'll it'll work for you. So uh, we're all for that as well. I don't have any dark sabers here to uh, display, but uh, I do wish that you would follow me. So uh, if you do so, uh, that will make me happy and uh, we'll uh, uh, continue our... Um, amiable conversations online. So until then, don't go far.